Good morning. Welcome to Hosanna. We're so very glad you could join us for our digital worship service this morning, and especially glad because it's Mother's Day, and we get to celebrate those special women in our lives. Uh, I know I'm particularly grateful for two mothers in my life, um, and for those of you who are keeping track, that's my mother and uh, my wife, who's the mother of my child. They are both amazing women, and I'm very, very appreciative of them. I also uh, want to make a note about Mother's Day. Um, you'll notice at the end of the service, we have something special prepared for the mothers. Uh, we've put, compiled some pictures of uh, people with their mothers or mothers with their children, grandchildren, so on. Uh, but also, we've taken some time to recognize that some of those women who aren't necessarily mothers, but have taken on a motherly role, who have been that support system, that guide to us. And so you'll see a few of those pictures there as well. And we would just want to say that we are so very grateful to all of those mothers in our lives, that you have been a part of our lives, that you have shaped us and molded us. And we thank you, and we ask that you would continue to do so for us, because we all need your help, let's be honest. So um, thank you so much to all mothers. Now, now we're going to continue uh, with our uh, Easter celebrations. As you can see, I'm still wearing white. The, the pyramids are still in white. We are still celebrating the resurrection of Christ and, and the joy that that brings to us and the hope that we have in him. So we're going to uh, begin this service calling on Christ, calling on our triune God to come and join us as we worship him in our separate homes. So we begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now going to do a confession and absolution, and if you're following along in the hymnal at home, it's on page 151. Uh, if you don't have a hymnal, I'm not surprised. It'll be on the bottom of your screen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now lift up our voices in song, praising our Lord Christ, who has been risen for us.
our first reading for today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 146. And if you want to follow along in your own Bible at home, feel free to pause the video and go grab it. Or if you're watching live, I'm going to keep talking just a little bit longer so that you have time to run and grab it. Uh, but this is a psalm talking about uh, where we place our trust, who we place our trust and our hope for good things in. Um, and, and there's a line in here that says, put your trust not in princes. And princes is the, the older term when princes were actually a thing in governmental leaders. But uh, this is an encouragement not to put your trust in governmental leaders, but instead to put your trust in God. Listen to what uh, the psalmist says to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. By the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the epistle of 1 Peter, chapter 2, and we will be reading verses 2 through verses 10. Like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading comes from the gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter. This is just as Jesus has wrapped up the, the Passover meal with his disciples, the meal where he washed their feet, where he uh, instituted communion and that grace for us. And now he's going to uh, speak to the disciples to give them some hope for what is to come. He tells them, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's now join our voices again from our own separate homes to sing a song of praise to our God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we read John chapter 14, it's hard to get a picture of what was going on in the disciples' minds when you read it in isolation from the, the rest of what's going on, like we did earlier. And so it's very important to, to kind of step back and look at what, what the disciples were going through and why Jesus would be saying these things to them at this time. And so what's been happening, what's going on 
uh, in John 14 is it's a, a Thursday evening, but it's not just any Thursday evening. It's the evening of the feast, the evening of the Passover feast, to be specific. This is the, the feast that the Jews celebrated every year to remember that God's deliverance of them from slavery in Egypt, that God has rescued them from their slavery. And, and so this is uh, the third time they've uh, been able to partake in this feast with Jesus. And things are starting to build up. They've started to have some expectations of Jesus because they've been following him for three years now. They've been getting to know him, getting to know uh, who he is, what he does, what he says. And he's done and said some amazing things, healing people who had no business being healed, uh, forgiving sins, making claims about himself that they were really buying into. They were starting to think Jesus might be the one. Jesus might be the Messiah we've been waiting for. And so in our reading, that they're getting that expectation that something big is coming. And all of his actions in that evening seem to indicate that too. I mean, you, you had just a week before, uh, on Sunday, him riding into town, making that claim to be king. You had him uh, then on that evening uh, washing their feet. And during the Passover feast, changing things and saying, I am, the, or take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood. And then he said something about being betrayed and something about Judas, and they weren't quite sure what was going on. Judas had left to, to go do something. They assumed he was getting more preparations. They didn't know exactly what was going on. But once he had left, then Jesus started talking to them. And he starts making these proclamations to them. And they're sitting there wait, listening with bated breath because they're expecting Jesus, to start doing his Messiah work. And they were right about that. That's what was about to happen. The thing is, they didn't understand what his Messiah work was. What they expected the Messiah to do was what everyone expected the Messiah to do, to come and establish the Jewish kingdom, to, to give them back their independence, to free them from the Romans so that they could be themselves. And if they were really dreaming big, maybe they expected the, the Messiah to come and, and not just kick out the Romans and make them independent, but, but to make them the heart of the empire, make them a Jewish-centered empire where they were ruling, they were the center of power and authority. That, at least, was the, the biggest they dared to dream. And that's what they expected of the Messiah. And Jesus did come to establish a kingdom, but not a political kingdom. Their big dreams were too small for him because he'd lost his kingdom to sin and death. And so his plan was to come and retrieve that kingdom again, take it back from sin and death so that he could rule over the world. Because he wasn't just thinking about a political kingdom kingdom and some people in a specific time, he was thinking about all people at all times, the whole world, all of the plants and animals and everything that had been corrupted by sin. He wanted to restore that. And so that's why he came. But in order to defeat that, those ancient foes of sin and death, he knew his road would take him to the cross, to that unbearable pain, to that suffering and death that would be so incredibly difficult for the disciples to understand. And so in our reading, Jesus wants to give the disciples hope. He knows what's coming he knows what's going to happen on Easter morning, and he wants to give them assurance that all is not, in fact, lost, but that he is the Lord, and he will rescue them. 
And so he gives them promises here in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Think about that promise. Have peace. Rest assured, O disciples, that Jesus isn't abandoning you, that Jesus is going and paving the way for you. That in him, you can have the good things of God. In him, you can be restored to God's kingdom. In him, you can be raised from the dead and live that good life that we were intended to live. That's one of his promises. The other is the promise that he is with the Father and the Father is, is guiding him, being with him. And so anything that is asked in his name will be given. Anything that is desired for the, the furthering of the kingdom, anything that will help move forward God's plan of salvation will be given. And they can trust that God is in fact working to their best ends to do what they absolutely need to share his love with everyone. But the other promise, the other proclamation Jesus makes in this passage is really the big one. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Everything hinges on Jesus. Everything goes through him. If you are not with Jesus, and in reality, you have nothing. But in Jesus, you have God. You have peace. You have hope. And that's what he was trying to tell the disciples on this evening, is that they can trust in him, they can have hope in him. Despite what's going to happen and how bad it's going to look, they can trust in him. We can trust in him. Because Jesus makes these promises. He's speaking to the disciples, but he's making these promises not just to them, but to us also, that you and I can have peace. Because while we're not going to go through Good Friday and the despair of Holy Saturday, we're going to go through a lot. We're going to go through worldwide pandemics. We're going to go through natural disaster and disease and death and now apparently murder hornets. And we're going to go through all of this and we're going to need hope because this world is a dark and depressing place. And we need something to cling to in the midst of this darkness so that we know that all is not lost. And if you think back to Psalm 146 and what the psalmist says there, where do you put your hope? In whom do you trust to rescue you? The psalmist's encouragement is not to put your trust in princes, in governmental leaders, in the structures of this world, in businesses or, or medicine or anything like that. Don't put your trust in the world which is just as fickle and flawed and broken as you are. We need someone who's bigger than the world. We need someone who's bigger than ourselves to rescue us from this great evil that we're facing. And that's Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Put your trust in God. That's what the psalmist tells us to do. And we have these promises given to us in John chapter 14 that we can cling to. Jesus promises us he's preparing a room for us. And he's going to come back for us and take us to that room. In him, we're going to be 
restored. In him, as we live in this world that's so fraught with peril and danger, so fraught with so much evil, we can trust in him, that he's working, and the things we pray in his name will be given to us because he's working for us. It all comes back to Jesus. It all comes back to him and his promises and the hope that we find in him. And so as we're dealing with this world with so much terror and pain and loss and suffering, as we go through murder hornets and pandemics and death and chaos, where do you put your hope? Put it in Jesus. Put it in the one who's bigger than any of the world's problems. Put it in the one who came into the world, humiliating himself to be on the same level as us. Humiliating himself to the point of death on a cross because he loves you so much that there isn't anything he wouldn't do to rescue you from this great evil. It is in his name. Amen. Now may the grace of God, which transcends all of our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are our way, our truth, and our life. Help us to find peace in you. Help us to find hope in you. 
as we face the trials of this world, remind us that you are Lord, that you have conquered all, even death for our sake, and that it's in you we can find hope. Help us to always turn to you. Help us to remember your great and gracious gifts to us. Be with us in our trials and tribulations. Be with us in the midst of this pandemic that is so draining for so many of us, it forcing us to stay home, forcing us to lose livelihoods and time with people and those precious relationships. Be with those who are ill from this disease, that you would bless them with a swift recovery to full health, and that you would please stop the spread of this disease so that we may return to normal as soon as possible. Be with us through this trial. Be with us through all of our trials, all of the things that we face that do go wrong. Give us strength to face them. Give us strength to endure them. And remind us that our hope isn't in princes, it isn't in the world, it isn't in anything but you our Lord Jesus Christ, our way, our truth, and our life, who has died so that we can be a part of your kingdom. Return swiftly for us. Bring us to our home with you. We also pray for those in our midst who are mourning. We know so many uh, members of Hosanna and family members who have passed away recently, and we mourn this loss. We know it's not the end. We know that you've defeated death, but we miss them now. And we ask that you would be with all who are mourning. Remind them of the promise of the resurrection. Give them peace during this time. For all of these things, we pray in your name, asking that you would help us to ever be faithful to you, to follow you, and to be your light to the world around us, the hope that everyone so desperately needs. And so now, as we wrap up our prayers, we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you're a regular member of Hosanna, you'll know that usually after the prayers, we uh, will launch into a couple of things. One is the offering, which is you know, difficult to pass a basket house to house besides not safe. But um, we do want to ask that uh, if you are a regular member of Hosanna, um, please find a way to give mail checks in. We're still checking our mailbox. Give online. Uh, Pastor Paul's usually here too if you want to drop off a check with him. Um, and continue to support. We've had a lot of generous support from many people but we could continue to use more and more support uh, so that we can continue to, to do the work that's required of us. Um, the other thing that we usually do at this time is we have communion. And so I want to offer a special invitation to you. If you are a member of Hosanna and in the, the Mesa area and want to come have communion, Pastor Paul will be here this morning, Sunday, May 10th, from 10 to 11.30, and he'll be doing small communion services of about uh, 10 people at a time uh, so you, we can maintain social distancing and everything like that and, and keep safe, but you can come and receive the body and blood of Christ. It'll be a short 10-minute service. Um, if one service is going on, we'll have people queue up in groups of 10 uh, and just make a line, stay safe, stay away, bring masks, please, just to keep everyone else safe too. Uh, but please come and receive the Lord's body and blood if it is safe for you to do so. And as you know, usually once we have done communion, then we close out our service with our benediction. 
if I can find it in my hymnal. There we go. And so I want to offer that benediction to you. This is as we go forth from church, this is God's blessing upon you. He says uh, from Numbers chapter 6, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And now I want to share with you our usual Hosanna closing. Go in God's peace, for we are his children. Amen. And now uh, at the end of this video, I would ask you to stick around and uh, listen to this wonderful solo by Teresa and uh, look at all the pictures of the mothers that have been so gracious to us and so wonderful to us. Thank you. So I'll shake